Hello everybody! Being back to making my videos for a while now, well, not so long, for five days, uh, I've really been looking forward to Season Up Sunday. And surprisingly or not, today happened to be the final Blitz Day in the Grand Chess Tour, a, a tournament that I mentioned to you about for quite some time. So I've decided for today's video to create a warm-up tactics video. So instead of explaining an end game for today, we are going to have a warm-up uh, tactics challenge. And uh, I will be showing you various positions where top chess players blundered. And of course, all of the games that I chose and all the positions that I chose for, uh, are from the Grand Chess Tour. And I really hope you're looking forward to this video as much as I am to sharing it with you. I believe that this is going to be a great way to make us feel a little bit better when we're blundering because we see top chess players making blunders as well. And knowing that this is more rare, of course, because in the Blitz uh, there isn't enough time for everybody to think everything ahead. So people are more prompt to making uh, errors. So with that said, Given that the Grand Chess Pre um, Grand Chess Tour, I'm sorry, is over, um, I want to let you know that Hikaru Nakamura won the event, followed by Magnus Carlsen and um, Maxim Vashelagrav. So these are the top finishers, and um, in about a week or so, actually less than a week, there's going to be another event in. Um, uh, Belgium, so I'm really looking forward to that one as well. But until then, let's get started. The first position that I have for you happened in the game between Wesley So, who had white, against Magnus Carlsen in round 10 of the Grand Chess Tour, of the Blitz, of course. So here is the position. White's last move was bishop c5, and Magnus responded rook e8. Seems like a very normal position. White is slightly better because they have the advantage of the bishop pair. And uh, in this position, Wesley So went for queen d7, attacking the rook. Now, what do you think about this move? Do you think this was the right choice for Wesley So, or was this a blunder? The answer is... Queen d7 was a blunder for Wesley So, and I hope you can pause the video and try to find out why. The reason is that here Magnus had this brilliant queen takes d1, after which Wesley resigned. Had he played a little bit longer, capturing the queen back, simply rook e1 check, and after king g2, bishop f1 check, white has to go king f3. Instead, if white goes king g1, they're simply bishop h3 mate. And after king f3, what do we have? Knight e5, check queen. And uh, black is super winning. So uh, this game went into Magnus Carlsen's uh, favor. Instead of queen d7, it's, it's, it's not so simple to see maybe this idea with knight e5, but... Um, especially in a blitz game. Instead of that, um, according to the computer, um, the best move here for white is bishop e7. The idea is that uh, black cannot just capture this pawn in a3, which they, of course, would like to, because after bishop takes a3, queen takes a3, there's a double attack that white has. With the same move that was actually um, a blunder in the game, but here, queen d7 is certainly much better winning a piece. So that is the reason why after bishop e 7 black cannot take um, the pawn. And the position should be about equal. Slightly better for white because of the bishop pair. But because of the pawn structure, it's very hard for either side to try to convert this into a win. So, I hope you enjoyed the first tactic blunder. Let's go on to the next one. And uh, I've, I've prepared it right here for you. This position came from the game Caruana Carlsen. 
So this was round 11. So next round. White's last move was king h1, trying to exit with the king from the p and avoid any kind of check queen somewhere. And in this position, um, a typical move for black would be to play rook f6. And the idea would be to chase away the queen. Um, and um, you, you can go queen g4, but then the knight will finally be able to exit. Black's problem in the position is this knight in g2 being trapped. And so after rook f6, queen g4, the knight gets out. Instead of queen g4, white, of course, could try queen e5. But that would, of course, allow the same move for black knight f4. The knight comes out and uh, black has compensation for the uh, pawn. Instead of rook f6, Magnus blundered. He went rook a to a6. Now, this is not the type of blunder that uh, makes you lose material immediately. It's more of a positional type of blunder. Let's see if you can pause the video and find the correct move for white. And the correct move um, can be seen after you see black's threat. After rook a to a6, I specifically made sure to let you know what was black's move so that you can see the threat. Rook f6 is most likely uh, what black wants to do. Try to, con to keep their knight in g2 and actually create some more threats on the king's side. The reason it was bad is that in this position, white can simply play e5, a really nice and natural move that stops you from going to f6. In fact, it stops the other rook from going to f6 as well. And now this knight in g2 is trapped. So in this position, um, Carlsen went for queen a8, trying to utilize the opening of the diagonal, but with the knight in f3 is really tough to actually do anything. So uh, Fabiano played rook b4, protecting the pawn a4, but also bringing the rook to a potential, um, potentially somewhere on the fourth rank, either g4 or e4. c5, rook e4, queen d5. Here, Fabiano played c4, and as we can see, currently, white has a pawn up and a trap knight in g2. After queen d3, Fabiano played rook g1, Magnus captured in a4, and now another very good move. Uh, Fabiano didn't hurry to take in g2. Instead, he went for e6, rook takes e6, and now knight e5. This was the biggest, the final blunder of, of uh, Magnus's. He could have tried to play on further if he would have uh, given away the exchange. Knight, rook takes and now knight h4. Trying to play this position on, but it's very difficult. White has an exchange up and a pass pawn that's ready to go to promotion. However, he blundered again, knight h4. and it's very simple, the ending. Queen takes f7. And wherever you go, h7 or h8, simply queen takes g7 mate. So this was our second blunder of the game of the day. The next position we're gonna go to is between Giri and Wesley So. Just give me a second to get to the game. So here is the position, and in this position we see that white has a rook and a pawn for two pieces. After bishop takes e5, most likely the game could have ended in a, in a draw. Black would respond either b takes e5 or queen takes e5, and um, the position is about equal. Instead, Giri played f4 here. Could you try to pause the video and find... Wesley's response. Okay, so this is not a very difficult tactical idea. Bishop takes d4 check, the rook is forced to take, and now black is going to utilize this pin. Queen c5, a very good move. 
And so he didn't hurry to move the knight away, right? He's just trying to utilize every tactical idea in the position. As soon as white played f4, the diagonal opened. And after queen e3, knight f to g4, attacking the queen. Uh, obviously, rook d8 wouldn't do anything because the queen in c5 is protected, right? So we just would capture the queen. And after queen d2, simply knight to c6, bringing a second attack on the rook. And after rook d8, um, Giri resigned. So another very nice game here. Tactical idea. The next game that I have for you, and position to consider, is this one. Between Aronian and Frisinet, played as well in round 11. In this position, um, Aronian blundered. He went for knight c8. And Fresinet didn't find the correct solution to win the game, and eventually the game ended in a draw. Instead of knight c8, most likely a move like knight c4 would have been the right continuation for white, and um, the game would remain balanced. After knight c8, Fresinet played queen d3, which is not uh, the correct move in this position. Instead, because I pressed go, uh, you might have seen the move here for black, but let's see the continuation, what happened exactly. After queen d2 check, uh, black could have won here because this king is much weaker than that one and is actually staying on a mate, whereas that one is not. Here white could go king h3 and now simply queen e1 threatening mate and... Um, White doesn't have any checks that will lead to anything. Queen e7 is the best that they can do, but after king g8, white could give maybe one more check, whether in e6 or d8, and after king h7, that's it. The checks are over, and black is going to be the one mating. Um, if the king moves, let's say king g2, simply queen e2 check, the king can go to g1, and now e3. And simply queen f2 is a threat, knight g4, the pawn would go to promotion, um, also knight h5 idea is a possibility, and uh, after queen f2, knight h5, knight takes g3, so many mating ideas, and unfortunately for Aronian, he wouldn't have had an answer. Luckily for him, Fresinet didn't find this move, and after queen d3, uh, the game went on for another 20 or 30 moves, and eventually um, the players uh, ended up making a draw. Okay, so, so many interesting games so far. Let's go on to the game between uh, Kramnik and Nakamura. This was the position that happened after 32 moves. And in this position, which might seem slightly better for white, because of course they have a pawn up, but their king is not so safe. So, you know, we can say that it's about equal, but white has to be very careful not to get mated, which is something that Kramnik overlooked here. He went for bishop g3, after which he's lost, and we're going to pause the video in a second and see why. Instead of bishop g3, most likely queen e3 would have been the correct solution, trying to trade the queens and make a draw what to do. If we don't have a win, right? It's better to make a draw than to lose. But, of course, given of the time pressure, which basically starts at move 1 in Blitz, um, Kronik played bishop g3. Try to pause the video and find out what happened. Okay, so I believe by now you pressed it. And you found it. The correct move here is bishop d5 which of course Nakamura didn't miss to find, and now white's king is going to prove to be really weak. Mates are coming and white doesn't have any way of protecting it. The best thing would be of course to give away the queen, but after that we don't even consider the position anymore. So Kramnik gave away a couple of checks, but after king h6, queen h8 capture, queen e8 check, after king h7 there are no more checks that are going to be useful for white, and in this position, Kramnik resigned. 
it's it's really a pity that he missed uh, he missed that move. It was um, certainly a, a good game of his. Unfortunately, Kramnik didn't seem to have been in his best shape during this um, tournament, but hopefully we're going to see him back in shape very soon. Okay, what else? What else? I have so many games here. I need to make sure I'm not missing any one of them. Okay, so the next game that I'm going to show you is between Fresina and Kramnik once again. And this is the position that happened after 48 moves. Fresina's last move was Queen G4 check. And surprisingly here, uh, Kramnik blundered. He just played Queen G7 in this position. And he's simply giving away a piece. There are multiple ways for white to win this position. Fresina chose queen takes g7 after which, no matter which piece you're capturing back with, I'm taking your bishop. Well, of course, if you take with the king, I'm going to make sure to trade the rooks first and then take your bishop. And white is winning. This is uh, this was a shocking answer um, after queen g4 check, specifically because that queen was placed in h6 for a reason to keep that pawn h2 attack but also pin the king so that uh, white would not be able to capture in g3. Of course, white does not have a threat to capture in g3 because here, if black simply goes king h8, um, if white were to capture in g3, he would lose on the spot. So after king h8, the best chance that Fresnel would have here to try to continue the game maybe would be queen c8, but after king g7, if white trades the rooks, they can never get that bishop, so they will have a couple of checks, but I believe on a good play this position would be a draw. So a big miss there for Kramnik, and um, it cost him half a point again. Well, let's see what's next. So many, so many interesting positions. And I feel bad to keep showing um, Kramnik losing. So let's go to the position between um, Giri and Fresine. And here it is, the position between Giri and Fresine in round 13 of this event. We're almost ready with the tactics challenge, so be sure to stay tuned a little bit more. In this position, Fresinet surprisingly made a big, big blunder. He played bishop f5. Why is this a blunder? Pause the video and make sure you are finding the answer for white. Okay, so in this position, white simply captures in f5, and after queen takes f5, Queen takes e8. And black's weakness is the 8th rank and simply white. Um, in this position, after Giri played queen takes e8, Fresine resigned. So uh, be careful with your 8th rank, you guys. It seems like uh, today was one of those days where people kept making blunders, which is not... Um, something that we like to see. <laughs> I mean, it is. I'm kidding. Okay, so let's go to another position between Kramnik and Karana. This position happened after 37 moves, and you. This was a big shock for me. In this position, White is definitely much better. They have a pawn up. They have the bishop pair. Uh, Kramnik should have some chances to win this. Let's say rook b8 would be a possibility and um, king h7 would allow g4. Not that, not that knight e8 wouldn't allow g4, but um, and after queen f3 there's no need to panic. There's just a threat in g2, so the queen is really greatly placed there to come back to defend the king and after queen g3 the position is definitely better for white. Unfortunately, and very surprisingly, Kramnik played the rook queen to d1 in this position. Can you believe it? I couldn't. It simply gives away a piece. Black could have just captured in c5 and have a piece up and, of course, eventually win the game. Surprisingly, 
uh, Karana didn't capture the bishop. Instead, he played queen f3. And after queen f3, of course, there's a threat in g2, so white has to go queen g1. And now the position is still uh, better for black. Queen d1 was a big blunder. Not only did it give the bishop, but now it also allow allows black to get active. But um, it just seemed so surprising that Kronik would make this move. Karana went for bishop d7. A little check in h7. And now bishop d6, um, Kramnik thinking probably to make sure that the king is going to be protected. But unfortunately, um, after bishop takes h3, the game went into Karwana's favor. They played a little bit longer, but after knight g4 check, knight takes f2, black is um, super winning here. Knight g4, king h3, and now queen f5. Karwana didn't try to go for winning more material, but rather trying to mate. Kramnik, after rook b5, trying to stop, of course, the mate, queen h5, queen e6, king h4, and now after knight e3, knight takes g2, is going to be mate the next move. So, Kramnik has made lots of blunders during this tournament. I'm actually very sad to see that because he's one of my favorite uh, chess players and uh, it feels bad when you see one of your favorite players losing badly. But it's, again, it's just um, Blitz, so I'm sure he's going to be getting back into the game um, in the next tournament. Okay, well, we've got three more positions to go. Be ready, guys. This video is longer than usually, but I'm telling you it's totally worth it. The position that I'm going to show you is actually more like half a game. It was very surprising for me to see what happened here. So, um, around move 30... This was the position that happened in the game Fresne against Carlsen. So in this position, if we evaluate it, of course, like we always do, we realize that white is winning. What do they have? What material do they have up? An exchange, but that's not as important as this A pawn is. And this A pawn is going to go for a queen. And so in this position... Um, Carlsen tried to create some ideas and grab as many of these pawns as possible so that later, after they will be forced to eventually give the rook for the A pawn, at least they will try to he will try to push the G and H pawn to promote. But after A5, knight takes F2. Frisina captured in D4 very well. Pawn takes. And here, I'm surprised he didn't go with the A pawn for the queen. Um... There's no need to capture this pawn in d4 because the pawn is just um, cannot push d3. Will just capture and you know game over after the a pawn promotes. Uh, he captured this pawn in d4, and here uh, the computer shows that f5 would have saved the game for for Magnus. Is certainly not a human move. Uh, personally, I I didn't consider it. I thought just by um, seeing the position, we realize that white is much better and should be winning here. So moves like this, I believe, is just a computer who can see them. So Magnus went for rook e8, a6. The knight goes back to try to capture in g5. Once again, a7 is simply winning. It's just very natural. And then Fresinek would consider rook c4, rook c8, and then promote. This knight is way too far from stopping the a pawn. Instead, he went for rook d3, and after capture, it's, it's very surprising to me the, the moves that Frestina missed. a7, go for the queen. Instead, he started capturing all of these pawns. Uh, finally, a7, knight e6, and here bishop c8 has to be played, just to make sure that the rook is going to control the square c7, so the knight cannot come to stop the pawn, and then, of course, the next move is going to be a8, queen, and black 
just can sign the sheets, it's over. Unfortunately, Fresine blundered here, and after rook c8, knight c7, black is able to stop that a8 pawn, or at least not give the rook for it. Um, and once again, bishop b7, which seems a very natural move to win the knight, unfortunately is not going to be winning anymore for white. King takes b2 is the move that had to be done, and then the idea is, of course, the queen. The king has to be the one coming to win um, the knight and then promote. But in blitz, it's very hard to calculate all these things. So after bishop b7, here's what happened. Black is starting to go with the pawns, and now it's not going to be sufficient material for white to win the game. Carlsen took all of his chances. Uh, this shows us what a great champion he is, you know, he doesn't give up anything, he keeps playing till the end no matter what. And even though at this moment, um, this was round 17, so before this round Hikaru Nakamura had won the event, Magnus didn't want to be remaining far behind him, so he definitely tried his best to get uh, back in shape in the last two rounds and win, which he actually did. G3. King h1, and here King g1, big, big blunder by Fresine. Instead of this, he had to go bishop e6. He cannot wait forever. The pawns are coming to promote, and so you really need to force them to be blockaded on dark square so that white is able to, um, to save the game. Simply bishop e6, and after h2, the bishop goes back to d5 and simply stay here with the king, and there's no way for black to win this position. After king g1, big blunder by Fresine. Black can win with king e3 and f3. Check. You have to go king f1. And in this position, Fresine resigned because, of course, black promotes first. That queen is going to be stopped. And uh, amazing. Amazing comeback by Magnus Carlsen. But certainly a painful loss for Fresine. Okay, two more go uh, positions to go, guys. I hope you are very excited for the last two positions. Um, so here is one of them. And once again, we have Kramnik. Wesley So has white in this position against Vladimir Kramnik. And here, Kramnik played f5. Big, big blunder by Vladimir Kramnik. This position is about equal. Um, there's an active king here in f4, but black doesn't have any entrances. White is certainly protecting everything. White's weakness supposedly would be c3, but it's well protected. There's no way for black to bring a second attack or try to create another weakness here. So uh, most likely black had to play knight a3 here, and if white would go knight c5, of course, he can just return to b5 and offer a draw. There's no way for white to pro uh, progress this position either. And instead of that, once again, Kramnik, after knight a4, which was the last move played in the position, Kramnik played f5. Why is this a big blunder? Please stop your video and find the right continuation. Okay, so... Unfortunately for Kramnik, after playing f5, his king is trapped. There are no more ways to exit the, uh, with the king. So after knight c5, knight e6 is a mate that's threatened in the position, but knight d3 is another mate that's threatened in the position. If it would be just one knight e6, of course, he could play knight c7 and protect. However, there are two, so... Um, he played g4, but after knight b6, of course, it's checkmate. So, a painful, painful day for Vladimir Kramnik, but okay, we had a lot of stuff to look at, very interesting ideas. The last position that I have for today is between uh, Magnus Carlsen and Hikaru Nakamura. I believe a game that everybody was on the look for. And here is the position. White's knight in f5 is certainly much better placed than this one in g5. Uh, white has a 
much better pawn structure and of course a great majority on the queen side which is mobile compared to black's majority which has been blockaded so it's going to be tough for black to create a pass pawn later on and um, white's rook in e8 certainly has some um, better activity than this one in f4 in this position hikaru nakamura played knight e4 which is a blunder the last blunder of my video today, so please be sure to pause the video and try to find out why this is a blunder. In this position, knight e4 is a blunder because it overlooks the importance of the rook on the 8th rank and the badly placed king in h7. So here after knight e4, Magnus played knight h4, the best move of the position, of course with the idea of playing knight g6, attacking the rook, but most importantly threatening checkmate. Here after knight h4, Hikaru played knight d6, attacking the rook, of course with the hope that um, maybe he won't stay on the 8th rank, or last chance to try to um, create some threat, but after rook d8, rook c7, white simply took the knight and won the game. Of course, taking the knight was not necessarily uh, the best move for Magnus in this position. Knight g6 would have won as nicely, because now, of course, we're threatening mate, and although black does have a protection knight f7, here we can just make a waiting move. And why do we need this waiting move? Because now, no matter what you do, let's say you capture that pawn, white has knight f8 check, you have to go back on the 8th rank, and now knight e6, and white can actually win a rook instead of just a knight. But of course that doesn't matter anymore, white was certainly winning, so um, that was certainly the best decision at the moment, specifically because it was a blitz. I really hope you enjoyed my season up tactics session. And I'm looking forward to making more videos tomorrow. Have a wonderful Sunday and see you soon.